We're looking at a painting at the Museum of Modern Art by Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. It's a uh, street scene Dresden, and it dates to 1908. And Kirchner's known as an expressionist artist, right? That's his He would become part of, part of a group called yes. De Brucke. Yeah, right? the bridge. The bridge. The is, bridge. Right, as they call themselves. What did the bridge mean? What was it a bridge to and from? From the past to the future? Well, yes, from the past to the future, but it refers really directly to Nietzsche. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't know, know that. that. Yes, I didn't know that either. Did oh, that makes it much more interesting. Thus spake <laughs> Zarathustra. Right, uh -huh. so the bridge from civilization to the Ubermensch. Uh -huh. Crossing the bridge, it's a journey of self-discovery, of individual self-actualization. There were so many German artists and craftsmen yeah. that were really interested in Nietzsche at this moment, right? Obsessed is a better word. Yeah. 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 What really, was it really about Nietzsche? Well, he was interested in taking apart ideas of morality, which constricted culture so much, I think, all over Europe, but especially in Germany. I think the young artists, uh, I think Kirchner was not even 30 at this point. Um, they're all pretty young, and they're really interested in sort of renewal and the new and... Well, Germany was late in coming to the Industrial Revolution, right? Mm -hmm. So th there's yes. a lot of change that's happening in a very yes. compressed sort of time period. They, in the 19, later 19th century, really tried to catch up to England and France, and they worked really hard to do that. And then there was a lot of growth really fast. Um, but there are all these cultural mores that they worked really hard to break out of. And Nietzsche was totally influential and inspirational because he posited all these ways of sort of breaking out of and really very holding constrictive, the individual alone proper, yeah. accountable yep. for yeah so that you wouldn't be proper and contained and and even in this painting there is a kind of isolation amongst those figures Definitely. isn't there even though it's a crowded sort of really dense scene that's i mean he's, this is a pretty wild painting really I, mean, I have to say i know that you like this painting i do i love this painting and i have always Really not. I, I, want, I love this painting. <laughs> so, All right, so I want to hear from both of you then. Why, why do you not like this painting? You know, I, I feel it feels very like a man looking at women on the street, and I know that they're, I don't know, it's, I guess for me, it doesn't build all that much more on the 19th century. On something um, like, like Munch's street scene, Karl Johann Strasse. Right, from 1880. And so, you know, that kind of interest in psychological angst and alienation in the modern world and a kind of, you know, using color to describe those things and brushwork. You know, this I really, as a symbolist artist, I really, mm -hmm. I really like this. And so did the Germans, by the way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think they, they, they really this. heroized it. But then him, when right? we get to this, and the colors become more garish and more difficult, the composition a little bit more, more disjointed, the brushwork more open, I'm not sure how much this adds. And there, I guess there's something uncomfortable to me about the way that he's looking at the women here. For me, the, the color and the garishness is what attracted me to it. I, I love the distortion. I love the green. I love the orange. I love the orange tracing around the woman's hat. It's glowing. I just love looking at that. Um, I feel like it's neon. If you look again at the entire composition, I love things that kind of pop out at different moments. I think it is about looking and it is about voyeurism and it is about the male gaze. If you look on the right side of the painting, I love that he's cut halfway out of the composition. Because yeah. just Degas did that in 1872. I think for me this sort of feels very much about isolation and German angst. You know, I, the, the point you were making about Degas I thought was an interesting one. Because yeah. in some ways France is going through those issues, you know, at, when Degas is painting. Mm -hmm. And, and Germany is a little bit later. I see. Uh, and, but that doesn't make this not authentic, mm -hmm. right? And an authentic expression of that moment. I'm not saying that they're the same thing. But the issue of sort of industrial alienation and, and the, the issue of urban alienation, I think, are, are both very important. Uh, issues in both of those painters' work, but this is clearly a 20th century work. I mean, there are lessons that have learned and freedoms that have been generated from from post impressionism and from other artists like, um, that are taken to fauvism. Exactly, much. like the, just the coloration. I think for me is something that makes it extremely like early 20th century. But it's not the sort of the beauty of fauvism. No, it's um, not. This is this is really a kind of. Um, sort of aggressive. It's very, I like you know, that. So, so Van Gogh's, you know, the this night cafe nice. said, yeah. you know, 
He wanted to, you know, give this the cafe, the night cafe, a sense of darkness <laughs> and misery by means of red and green. You know, that's what Van Gogh said. 30, 20 or 30 years before this and uses, you know, he's got that horrible pink color in that painting. So so maybe the power here is the very thing that you don't like, which is yeah. the women as subject, right? Well, and I, I know that. that he's doing images of prostitutes on the street, well, right? And I guess that knowing that informs my looking at this painting and it starts to make me really worried about the way that modern historians look at these images. I think that his because I think of his prostitute, the streetwalker scenes as five years later. Those are in Berlin, he's right? He's in Berlin. And they're in like Potsdamer Platz and Friedrichstraße. There's main city centers and where the women are very, it's a lot more strident and the women are definitely the focus of the male gaze and there are a lot of men kind of circling around the women. Um, those are less interesting to me also, I think in, just even in terms of looking at the color and the composition for some reason. And I know that a lot of people like those more um, and his style is, is more developed and he's more mature as an artist. I like that this is more raw. Ida Kirchner, he's really focusing on that authentic kind of direct engagement with like the experience of the city, the the electric, mm -hmm. the movement. A kind of constant shift and change mm -hmm. here, as if all of those voids, um, that sort of wonderful sort of pink area, love, yeah. um, is, is constantly changing and shifting as the, as the figures that define that space move, mm -hmm. right? I feel like he's experimenting with something. Could we see the women here as sympathetic in some way? Maybe if I wasn't reading it through the guise of those later images of prostitutes on the street. I mean, she is, you know, she does look out at us, you know, She's lit by the lights of the city. When you said neon, I could sort mm -hmm. of feel that those kinds of lights maybe in the that dusk in the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she looks out at us and, and... Well, they don't look to me, honestly, like prostitutes. Right. No, like I, I'm, saying, no. I'm saying that they're bourgeois women, but maybe there is something sympathetic about her if we don't look at her through the lens of those later images. I think that there is. I mean, I, I think... I guess to me that just seems like these isolated figures and that's what attracts them to me. I'm, like it's a theater. If you look at the side there's almost like a pillar figure of that male figure kind of yeah. holding the picture together and it pulls your eye in and he's right there and he's sort of between you and the female figures and then everything kind of recedes behind that diagonally to the left mm -hmm. in the back. So you see the girl kind of in the center stage and then so the woman who's theatrical. turned away. I just feel like the lighting. Mm -hmm. And the way that the yeah. figures are arranged. That could almost be paws. limelight coming yeah. up from below. You know, what I love about it is, although it's a city, um, you know, and you have the slightest trace of the, of the trolley track, mm -hmm. um, there's no architecture. The entire space is defined by the occupation of these figures, mm -hmm. and, uh, or the, their occupation in space. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, in a sense, it's, it's the city defined by these people, um, oh. defined by in, in space itself shaped by, um, by this sort of changing crowd, which I think is really Really an interesting idea. He's not using buildings. He's not really even using intersections. He's using people to define, to define what's going the on. space and, in a sense, to build a city out of the people who are out who of are, the shifting yeah. masses. This is Königstrasse in Dresden, which is a main thoroughfare of shopping. So there's a lot of traffic and movement, and this is definitely part of a very well-known street in a very well-known area, and it's very populated. In the in the late 20, you know, in the second half of the 19th century, when artists painted street scenes like Degas, because this looks to me like he's looking at Degas, but you know that there is more of a sense of architecture of place. and place. Yeah. There's nothing here that's stable. Everything right. here will be different in a moment, mm -hmm. um, and there's something sort of wonderful about about I think, that. Yeah, I think I like looking also at just that little girl and her big hat yeah. and her ugly kind of claw-like hand. Yeah. So I think she's holding some kind of toy. Or but, flowers maybe? Or flowers or something, yeah. but in the painting it really looks scary. Yeah, um, yeah. There's also the way that she's, the way that her legs are slightly mm -hmm, splayed and mm -hmm. um, there's something very her ungainly. Hair, her yeah. hair is kind of dripping down the sides yeah. of her face. It's kind of inelegant, yeah. And actually, throughout the entire painting, there's this really interesting tension between the uh, sort of a, the effort at elegance in the dress, mm -hmm. but then the ungainliness mm -hmm. or the sort of the aggression of, of the representation. So there's this sort of wonderful sort of back and forth. Mm -hmm.